Hi, it's Rachel, and welcome back to the Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, the Met Office on Storm Amy, as weather warnings upgrade to Amber. But first... I began Roots and Shoots with just 12 high school students who wanted to help in different ways, and we decided on a program. The main message, every single one of us makes an impact on the planet every single day and we can choose what sort of impact we make. When hundreds and thousands and millions of people just like you are all doing something to make the world better, wow, we make a huge difference. The world's leading primatologist, Dame Jane Goodall, has died aged 91. Jane dedicated over 60 years of her life to studying chimpanzees and conservation. In 1996, she founded Roots and Shoots, an educational and environmental charity which aims to nurture young minds and hands to build a sustainable future through community-led conservation actions. A statement shared on Facebook by the Jane Goodall Institute said the conservationist was in California as part of her speaking tour when she died peacefully of natural causes on Wednesday morning. Jane Goodall's legacy is, is really an incredible one and, and, and so closely linked. Dame Jane began working indeed at London Zoo's film library at the time Granada Television's film library was housed um, here at London Zoo back in 1958. On a more personal level I've, I've got very fond memories of meeting Dame Jane Goodall here at, at London Zoo. We shared a passion for great apes and conservation and I will always remember um, Dame Jane's signature chimpanzee greeting that she began so many of her public-facing talks with. That's Dan Simmons, London Zoo's Animals Operations Manager. She made, for example, chimpanzees an interest for so many people around the world and, and helping to inspire the next generation in the natural world, not just in chimpanzees but in so many animals, was, was an incredible legacy for, for Dame Jane and we honoured uh, Dame Jane Goodall with the ZSL Silver Medal more recently in 1996, which is for us something that we will really remember very fondly and um, a great, great loss to the, the scientific world. According to the Jane Goodall Institute, her discovery in 1960 that chimpanzees make and use tools has been considered one of the greatest achievements in 20th century scholarship. Tech and Science Daily also spoke to Dr. Jake Brooker, a postdoctoral researcher in primatology at the University of Durham, studying great ape social cognition and its socio-emotional behaviour. She entered into the field of primatology when it was this quite stuffy, male-dominated field. Um, everyone was quite stubborn in their in their opinions, and she came in and really shook the status quo. She wasn't a trained scientist. She had no biases, and she got so much pushback from the people that she was working alongside. She just saw the chimpanzees for what they are, as complex and deeply social animals. During my undergrad, I, I started getting interested in evolution and behavior, and my brother bought me In the Shadow of Man, which is Jane's first book. And as soon as I read it, I was just hooked and committed. You know, I knew from then on that I just wanted to work with chimpanzees and, uh, and to learn more about them. It was the first time that I started to really appreciate the extent of intelligence outside of outside of humans you know i'd been reading and studying everything from this very anthropocentric perspective and she really shattered all of these uh all of these preconceived notions that i that i had about you know our exceptionalism and yeah how unique we are yeah it helped me really appreciate our place in the natural world and to appreciate that it is how much it is something that we need to, to protect. Over the course of her life, Jane won many awards, including becoming the UN Messenger of Peace in 2002. She wrote over 30 books and starred in a handful of films, such as National Geographic's documentary film Jane. You may also remember her appearance in The Simpsons. And in 2022, toy brand Mattel released a Jane Goodall Barbie doll as part of their Inspiring Women series. When I was growing up, you know, I, there weren't any female role models, but my heroes were Tarzan, Dr. Doolittle, and there weren't women doing the kind of things I wanted to do. Girls 
don't want just to be film stars and things like that, but many of them, like me, want to be out in nature studying animals. And so a Barbie doll who's Jane is a super idea. Clip there, courtesy of PA. Let's go to a quick break. Coming up, the Met Office's Alex Deacon on Storm Amy as it approaches the UK, plus debunking the myth that Instagram is listening to you. Welcome back. The UK is due to be hit by gale force winds as the first named storm of the season, Storm Amy, approaches. To tell us everything you need to know, I'm joined by a friend of the show, meteorologist at the Met Office, Alex Deacon. What do we know about Storm Amy, Alex? Storm Amy's forming out in the Atlantic and going to intensify during Thursday night and into the early hours of Friday morning. Really not impacting the UK, though, until Friday night. Um, late Friday afternoon, evening time across the far northwest. And the strongest winds likely to be Friday night and into the early part of Saturday morning. So the wind speeds across northern England, north Wales, northern Ireland, southern central Scotland is going to be 60, perhaps 70 miles an hour around coasts. But it's really the northwest of Scotland where the winds are likely to be most damaging. We have an amber warning in place for gusts of wind of 80, perhaps even more than that, 85, maybe even 90 miles an hour in really exposed areas. So, yeah, those kind of winds are likely to cause damage, potential structural damage to buildings, certainly have issues with trees, uh, bringing branches down. And that is likely to cause some some disruption, the serious potential for power cuts, along with travel disruption. Ferry services are going to be cancelled. But of course, you know, trees coming down on lines, that kind of thing can seriously impact uh, rail and road um, services. Much of the south will just have a bit of a wet and windy spell and nothing too much to worry about. All the warnings and all the focus for the most damaging winds uh, are across the northern half of the UK. So what's caused this storm system? Amy's kind of been spawned from a tropical weather system. Uh, earlier in the week, we were looking at Hurricane Umberto and another hurricane, Imelda, interacting with each other around the Caribbean. They've both been kind of drifting northwards. Umberto fizzled out yesterday, but from its remnants, from its leftover uh, energy, we've seen this little area of low pressure spin up. Thursday, it's not very much, just a fairly standard area of low pressure, but as it interacts with the jet stream, it's really going to intensify over the next 24 hours. So, yeah, it's kind of come out from tropical air, which is why it's got a bit more energy. Uh, and it will also bring some warmer conditions for a time, but it's really the wind and the rain that are gonna cause the issues. Next. Instagram boss Adam Masseri has said that the app isn't listening to your conversations. In a post on Instagram on Wednesday titled Myth Busting, he explained the reasons why the app isn't eavesdropping, such as that it would be a gross violation of privacy, drain your phone's battery and you would notice and you would see a little light on the top of your screen letting you know the microphone was on. He said he's had many passionate conversations on the topic and even his wife has brought it up with him a few times. The reason why you might see coincidental posts? Well, he says it's down to what you search and the posts you interact with. If you've been shopping online, Instagram do work with advertisers who share information on user traffic to try to target those people with ads on the social platform. Meta, who own Instagram, revealed on Wednesday that it would be using user chats with its AI products to sell targeted ads across its platforms. This will be reflected in their updated privacy policy by December 16th. Next. Leading cancer doctors have called for an outright ban on some beds in the UK, warning that the tanning devices cause cancer. They added current regulations are ineffective and have had little effect on tanning bed use by young people. A new study published in the BMJ concludes that an outright ban is likely to be cost-effective for the NHS. Professor Paul Lorigan, a melanoma expert at the Christie Cancer Hospital in Manchester, and colleagues highlight how indoor tanning is experiencing a boom in popularity, particularly among Gen Z, after social media posts suggest the use of the tanning devices are linked to wellness. They state up to 28% of people use sunbeds in the UK, despite a 2009 ruling from the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which said exposure to ultraviolet radiation from sunbeds was carcinogenic, leading to melanoma the deadliest form of skin cancer and other skin cancers. 
In England, there are 2,600 cases of melanoma among people aged 25 to 49 every year, two-thirds of them women. And finally, according to international researchers, walking changes how we process sound. As part of their study, now published in the journal J Neurosci, they asked 30 volunteers to walk in a figure eight pattern, listening to a continuous stream of sound while their brains were being scanned. Results showed stronger brain responses while walking as opposed to standing still or walking on the spot. They also found that walking in different directions prompted different brain responses. Liu Kao from Zhejiang University said, When people made a right turn, responses to sounds from the right ear were enhanced at the beginning of the turn and then suppressed, relative to the responses to sounds from left. This could reflect a change in attention during turns. Kao said it could reflect a filtering operation of the brain. It might actively suppress predictable background sounds, like our own footsteps, while increasing sensitivity to unexpected sounds from the side. This might allow for faster reaction times and safer navigation in dynamic environments. And that's Tech and Science Daily. If you enjoyed it, please do give us a rating and a follow. For all the latest news, head on over to standard.co.uk. This show returns tomorrow. We'll see you then.